tube? Check this out. Yeah, your man may have the Lego Death Star, but can he chug a can of sparkling water without burping? Nope. Just a reasonable amount to keep my hydration up. Forget this. Don't even look at my streak. It's not for you. Dark side tainted lost with a side of Mega Satan. Coming right up. Me feeling poor because I'm drinking tap water? Dude, there's nothing wrong. Honestly, like, tap water heavily owns. Um, didn't you see? Okay, so, like, this is a real story. Uh, like, I'm just going to level with you. Let, let, before I get into this story, let me just tell you the honest truth. Buying sparkling water is kind of throwing money down the toilet. Like, it's not something you need to buy in order to, you know, survive. You obviously, like, it's it's a discretionary expenditure. It's not, it's not like, a necessity, okay? So, if, if you should never feel bad for not buying it, for sure. Um, but then, secondarily, like, uh... So I did the LaCroix taste test. Somebody tweeted me and was like, check it out. I bought the LaCroix that you said was the best and it really is schmacking. And then somebody <laughs> replied to it and was like, you know, you're just drinking flavored tap water. But here's the wrinkle, okay? The person that replied to it was a self-declared water sommelier. Um, and I, I think may actually, apparently there was an episode of, of the Zac Efron travel show where he talks to a water sommelier, and I think is this guy. So he was, I guess he just searches Twitter for, like, people buying LaCroix, and then, like, gets up in their mentions, and is like, don't buy LaCroix, or something like that. I know you're like, is it a joke? No, it is not a joke. It, like, in a way, I'm admiring it, because it's like, I didn't know this was a thing that actually existed. However, at the same time, I was kind of like, don't cyber bully my fans for drinking sparkling water, man. It's just the kind of a weird energy. Okay, we're good. Mega Satan, Mega Satan Dark Path, Mega Satan Dark Path. Then the person that they were, uh, let's not say cyberbullying, that's a little too far. But the person that they had, had criticized um, was like, I don't have a sparkling flavored tap water that comes out of my tap at home. And then he said, oh, okay, why don't you just buy a soda stream and then squeeze fresh fruit into it? And I was like, man, this is like... It. This guy's very passionate about <laughs> sparkling water, huh? Crazy, yeah. It's, it's it's mouth, it's mouth in another life. Personally, like at home, I don't even drink like water that the Earth made for me. I like to locally source uh, my own hydrogen and uh, oxygen atoms, and then I like to I like to put a little oxygen in the middle, and then diagonally offset two hydrogen atoms, and uh, that makes a single water molecule. I repeat that ten trillion times, and. Uh, I get a I get a sip. I get a little sip of the of the potion. And it's the only way. Although okay, you got to add some minerals in there too. You don't want to drink purified water. That's something I found out when I scrolled down his feed. Purified water is uh is sussy. Baka. Three range down pills on the same floor, huh? the same thing as craft beer. I, I take issue with that. Like, I think the reason that some people might get into craft beer is because it's, um, you know, a hipster thing. But it really does usually taste a lot better and give you a greater variety. Like, if, if you don't tell the difference between, like, uh, you know, a domestic macro brew... Budweiser or something like that, and, uh, you know, a lambic milk sour, then I, I think that, the you know, you, you need some more experience in the realm. It's probably true for water as well. Like, I'm not saying that no difference in the flavor exists. Merely, like, 
stay out of my mentions, please, I guess is what I'm suggesting. <laughs> I guess, like, I'm sure the answer... Oh, c dude, come on. Come come on, man. I'm sure the answer just comes down to, like, money. Probably. But, like, why don't... Um, why don't... Macro breweries... There are exceptions, okay? But, like, by and large, why don't macro breweries simply make better beer? You know what I mean? Like to me it just seems like you know the 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 recipes, like these micro breweries, they're not performing like witchcraft or anything like that. Why don't they just make their beer taste better? I actually think like in in the realm of of alcoholic beverages, Bud Light Lime was probably the the smartest business decision that's been made in my lifetime. I and I've only I've had one Bud Light Lime in my whole life, I think, and it kind of sucked. But as soon as I drank it, I was like I completely understand that this is no longer like this is not made for the discerning customer anymore, which is fine. It's made for people that are like I want to just tastes like an artificially flavored beer. It's it's like uh, it, it they've targeted a completely different consumer set than what you would think like the rational consumer would be interested in. But it exists. It's it's a masterstroke of 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 marketing genius. I never would have done it. I would have been the idiot in the boardroom who would be like, why don't we just like spend some more money to make our beer better by using better ingredients? Dude next to me would have been like. What if we just put some synthetic lime flavoring in it and call it, like, Bud Light Lime? One of us is getting promoted and one of us is getting sent to the scrap heap. And I, I'm telling you, I think I would have been on the scrap heap. They'd be like, if you want to make good beer, go work at Sam Adams, okay? That's not what we're here for. Anyway, I, I apologize. I, I went off. Oh, he's saying it. I would love to see a deal with the angel. This is not so bad. You have no good beer ideas, Paul. I would love to see a deal with the angel. That's about, that's all I got to say. And then maybe like an item of some value here would be pretty sick as well. Look, I'm not I'm not trying to be like the world's number one Sa Sam Adams fan. It's just kind of like it's the go-to like nationally available good beer. I don't even think we get it on the West Coast, but like when I'm in Boston, however rarely for PAX East, I'm never like I'm never upset when a bar has Sam Adams. I'm like it's pretty like it's not bad, genuinely not bad. Um it compares very favorably to many nationally available uh, loggers, especially. I would rather have a Sam Adams than a PBR, for sure. Lagunitas, I don't know, but like, but Lagunitas, I, I always thought it kind of like it borders on craft beer. It's like, it's like half craft. It's like arts. I'm just begging you for some items, man. I guess we're not doing that bad, but... In the shop, there's a question mark. It hides a blank card. Dude, if it's a, if it's a blank card, 24-hour VIP. That would be incredible. What's the worst beer when drank warm? Any super cheap, like, lager, oh, does not, uh, does not warm well. <laughs> like, in Canada, there's a few different brands that are essentially just, uh, meant to be, like, very cheap and legally drinkable. Um, Lucky, Lakeport, Laker, 
I don't know why there's two brands that have lake in them, but those are uh, Kokanee is another one. Served, you know, ice cold on a summer day. They're uh, they're not so bad. You know, they could they could give you a, a, a little something. It's not bad. I can I can be happy with that. Um, but if if you've had it out of the fridge for like half an hour, it's better off in the sink, I think. Trunk him? No, no, come on, come on. It's not a trunkable offense. I thought Lucky was the beer of choice in BC. Admittedly, you know, I moved here kind of after my college days, so I'm in, I'm in a different, like, subset of the population now. My impression is that um, Blue Buck is the, the discerning budget drinker's lager of choice. Uh, and Blue Buck's pretty good. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with Blue Buck, and it's, it's definitely on the cheap side. Um, I do see a lot of, like, when I'm out for walks and stuff like that, I see a lot of kokanee cans crushed up. Um, I don't see that much Lucky or Lakeport. I don't think Lakeport is even here, but... What? <laughs> he turned into Kevin O'Leary for a second. Um, but you know what I do see a surprising amount of? I, I if, you, if you've ever seen the movie FUBAR, they drink a beer that's literally just called Pilsner. I thought they made it up for the movie. It wasn't until I moved to BC that I found out it's an actual... Uh, real brand that like their beer is literally just called Pilsner like it, it's like a it's like if you named your rap album rap or something like that I know because there's some people in the chat right now that are like I'm you know, from Bohemia, and, like, we drink a lot of Pilsner here. Now, I know, but, like, I'm not talking about a, a, a Pilsner or a Kel, which is delicious. I'm talking about, like, this is a, a, is some kind of... Are you actually kidding me, like, with all these space bar items? I'm gonna win, because I... Look, I'm gonna win, because you're making me very upset. And when you're upset, you need some dopamine. You only get good items as Tainted Loss, man. Everybody knows that. Anyway, that's that's my thoughts. I'm a I'm a I'm a Storm Black Plague Stout and a Driftwood Fat Tug guy. But uh, it's definitely not the kind of beers you'd be like i'm gonna sit down and like me and my buds are gonna hang out i'm gonna have like seven of them you'll either fall asleep or throw up or like just hate yourself <laughs> one of the two one of the three is gonna come to pass <laughs> this is the kind of beers you like have one of and then the second one you're like yeah sure i'll take another one and a third of the way through the second one you're like I shouldn't have, I should have just gotten the water. This is, this is too much. That's an amazing gulp if it sticks with us. Have you ever had Unibrew? I have uh, on many, many occasions. Like in universe, The run sucked anyway, I'm not mad. In in university, Unibrew was like weird flex, because it wasn't a, a cheap beer, but the secret was, despite not being a, a, a cheap beer, it cost about twice as much as the cheapest beers, but it had twice as much alcohol content as well. So you were kind of like flexing, but it was an economical flex as well. Um, so I, I've, I've dabbled with my fair share of... Uh, La Fin du Mans, and uh, Maudite, and Blanche de Chambly, and I'm trying to think of the other, Ephemere or whatever it's called. I've, I've been there. Yeah, La Fin du Mans might be like the first good beer I ever had in my entire life. <laughs> I think every place on Earth, though, 
has like an insanely cheap. Uh, okay, we'll we'll just take. This is a good hydration break. I think every place on Earth has like one insanely cheap bad logger that exists like just to, you know, when you're a, a teenager or a young adult, you could drink like you know, eight of them or maybe more and uh, survive to the next morning. Like in Ontario, there's like seven different brands. James Reddy 5.5, the beer most noteworthy for uh, being 5.5% instead of 5%. Um, McClay's? I don't even want to think about McClay's, man. Carling as well. I know it's like it's a British beer. It's maybe like the only time I've ever seen an import in Canada that's as cheap as a domestic. So that's how you know, like, it must be pure garbage. <laughs> so they, like, put it in a in a box. They put the box inside of, uh, like, a shipping container, loaded the shipping container onto a freighter, sent the freighter across the Atlantic Ocean, offloaded it with some longshoremen on the other side, and then we're like, eh, it's worth about a dollar a bottle. It's crazy. You know how much work went into that? It, the, the margins must be like negative 80%, man. It's crazy. I remember being in university and you're like, oh, I, I just, I, I got the cheapest steak from the grocery store. Let's have a classy dinner. I would have like the cheapest steak from the grocery store and then uh, a carling alongside of it. Really highlights the flavors of the, of the steak. The can starts to sweat once it's out of the fridge for like more than three or four minutes. Like it's, good lord. Anyway, this said uh, memories like the colors of my mind, misty water colored memories of the way we were. It is. I know we've talked about it a lot, but it is funny to me as well when like. One one country's like garbage beer is like another country's classy beer. You see, like over here, people, um, you know, I would say young adults especially, and also people my dad's age, if they want to flex, they'll buy like um, Stella or or Heineken or like Grolsch. Grolsch isn't horrible, I guess, but. Or Guinness, but I'm not I'm not crap talking Guinness. Like I think that's pretty good. But like the you you always know somebody shows up with like a, a mini keg full of Heineken, you're like, oh I get it. You you think you're you think you're slick, huh? You think you're cool. By the way, I gotta the Hello Fresh must have heard what I said. We're going for Mega Satan. This one could work. This one could work. Hello Fresh must have heard what I said. Because um this time they included an advertisement in our box. And it was like the the advertisement made no sense. It it was in an envelope that said free gift from HelloFresh to you. And then I opened it up and it was an advertisement that said, Hey, it's Caesar week soon. Scan this QR code to get some recipes. That is not a gift. That is an advertisement. And I absolutely will not scan the QR code to get a gift. Or to get a, a recipe, I should say. However, apropos of nothing at all, Right next to the envelope was uh, two cans of Perrier sparkling water that I guess were just there to be like, we can't just send them an ad. We got to include like something. So they included two cans of Perrier sparkling water. I got to say, drank them. Well, Kate had one, I had the other one. They were fine. They're not as good as LaCroix though. Not, not even on the same... And, uh, like, LaCroix might not even be as good as Sparkmouth or AHA. So, like, we got a we got a ways to go there. 
I have in in my life. I've received two non-alcoholic Heinekens from HelloFresh. I see people in chat saying that as well. I always dislike them, but I always drink them as well. I I don't know, I don't know why. It's just like I like the human brain. I think craves some novelty. My brain is like, ah, I haven't tasted this badness in a while. That's true, and there's something free has a lot of power associated with it, right? You're like, oh, free, I gotta, I gotta try it. Doesn't even matter how hard you try. I'm not hating on non-alcoholic beer necessarily, like, I, you know, I just always assume that it's, you know, maybe like a useful tool for people who don't want to drink. For, you know, what could be many different reasons. That being said, the, oh, dude, we got to take this because like we could we could fish for holy cards. This could be big. They do. They, they. I was just gonna say. In my in my experience, they don't taste very good. But <laughs> accepting that, I I do wonder though, because like they they sell this beer. I don't know if it's a Canadian one, but it's a non-alcoholic beer they sell at Whole Foods called Partake, which I think is kind of clever branding for uh, a non-alcoholic beverage. Because it's like you're participating, but you're like you know. In a clever way. But, um, I do wonder, because I would say much of the time I see someone carrying a case of it when I'm in the grocery store. Um, I wonder what percentage of the time it's uh, someone who thinks it's alcoholic beer. I do think it it's at minimum 10%. I don't think it's like 90. I think most people know what they're getting, but I, th I think it could be minimum 10%. What the heck is that? There was one time, like, Kate's, uh, I think it was Kate's aunts brought us a, a she, was, she was visiting from the US. She brought us a gift and like, it's not her fault, but like, she clearly didn't really know anything about us. She was like, I heard you guys like, like beer. And we're like, I guess so. Um, and she gave us, uh, some, like, a Rattler that she bought at the grocery store that was non-alcoholic. I, I was like, I could have told you that. <laughs> it's, she basically gave us, like, a four-pack of, of soda that was in glass bottles. It was a nice gesture, don't get me wrong, but, you know, she she thought she was giving us, like, a, an, uh, the gift of alcoholic beverage, but instead she was just like, you know, here's some, here's some lemonade mixed with non-alcoholic beer, and I'm like, eh. I still, we still drank it, but... Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it ta I wouldn't buy it for myself, but... <laughs> okay. We're getting serious on this floor now. Things, things could get real here. We get a lot of money. We use the money to mill holy cards out of the shop. I don't remember if we have a holy card active right now. I think we might. Thoughts on when people say they don't drink? Um, so I do drink, but I feel like when people don't drink, like, it's actually like a huge positive, like more power to them. I mean, it is, like, literally poison. It's, uh, like, a, a known carcinogen. And probably, like, I think, I mean, this is a bit, probably, like, uncomfortable for people to hear to some extent, for sure. But I feel like people always use, like, in moderation to cover up for bad habits um, when they're not actually doing things in moderation, you know? I'm like, if you, you can say like in moderation, but if you're, if you're habitually like drinking a lot, 
you don't get to use that as like a catch-all, I guess. Or if you drink like, you know, eight beers a night two times a week, that's not really moderation because you have like five days off in between it. That being said, you know, I, I think, um, you know, it, it, you can probably do it in a relatively healthy way as well. But I, I do think that, like, society has uh, an over... And this is coming from somebody who does drink. But I think society has given alcohol way too much of, like, a free pass. So when people are harassed about not drinking or, like, kind of, like, even just made to feel uncomfortable about it, I think it's very silly. But I also think that's kind of, like, the patrician's take. <laughs> I think that's, that's, like, the most reasonable people are, are on the same page there, I think. And that's why, like, I wouldn't hate on non-alcoholic beer, right? Like, I got, uh... It's, it's not a product I really see myself using or, or understanding the point of, but, you know, if... if you don't want to drink, but you want to get that same sort of feeling of... You know, being at the, the barbecue or something, or even, you know, you could just pour it into a glass and people will think you're drinking, and... You know, if it, if it helps you not get harassed, more power to you. I gotta check, man. Okay, hold on, hold on. Tears down. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I don't care. Justice is oh, come on, man, come on. I think the faster we fish for it, the better. Eight, seven cents? Okay, hold on. Wheel of Fortune. Eleven cents? That's too much, man. I think we gotta stop there. I've spent like 50 cards on- or 50 coins on this. I'm abusing my donation machine. Drive it- begging for the location of the holy card through text. I mean, the only thing- I guess this is again- I'm not a doctor. I just, like, I, I've talked about it before. I worry about, like, the the normalization of, uh, of kind of, like, alcoholic culture. Like, the, the wine ants, like, you know, don't talk to me until I've had my Zinfandel, or, like, those, those posts. They're just memes, right? But they're, like, uh, you know, I, uh, hey, my doctor said I can only have, like, one glass of wine a day, and then they have the, the glass that is, like, the size of a bottle, and you're, like, yeah, but, like, you're gonna, like, you're gonna really harm your health. Like, I get the joke, but it's, like, you, <laughs> your doctor just wants what's best for you. <laughs> Moreover, like, I don't know if your doctor really cares if you die, really, I guess, is what... What the other thing I would say, like, I'm sure they would rather you didn't die. Um, but I'm sure if they were like, hey, you know, you can only have a glass of wine a day and then you kept drinking a bottle a day and you died, that your doctor would be like, I told them, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? What more can I do? Hey, hey, drop a wine. Counterpoint, my doctor's a nerd. Yeah, dude, your your doctor definitely has never done a keg stand. I, on the other hand, have probably done a half dozen in my life. That's not a that's not a staggering number, but it means you can trust me because we're kindred spirits. Did you hear that? <laughs> the heck just happened out here. <laughs> Hold on, I just sounded like somebody uh, fell down outside. Just give me a moment, I'll be right back. Sorry, YouTube.
It's all good. It was just mouth. <laughs> just kidding. Our, our... Sorry, I muted myself again. Our security camera fell down. Oh! Okay. Don't get hit. Don't get hit. No! Can I be honest? I thought we had a holy card active there. That run though was also not that good. Like I'm, I'm not sweat. That was not like a guaranteed win that we that we screwed up. That was like forgot it doesn't give you bombs. I didn't have any bombs. <laughs> I was so excited to get the spirit hearts out of that tinted rock that would have would have changed the game for me. How long until you do an all transformation run, a la Daniel? Um, I'll do uh, an all transformation run when they make more than a third of the transformations uh, useful in in the slightest. Which is another way, I think, of saying never. Just follow the speedrun tactics. Peepo G, get the Emperor card. Peepo G. Peepo G, if you can get a Sun card, get a Sun card. Hmm. Well, well, well. Hold on. We are gonna we're gonna get pinched on time here, no question. But blank card is mighty interesting. Half price restock is kind of interesting too. Uh, I think we gotta try blank card though. Even though we did use our holy card already, you can't rely on blank card. I mean, we gotta. We gotta see. Why don't we don't have any money right now? This is like the only time I've ever wished for pageant boy early on. Early pageant boy, please. I'm gonna become the Joker. Mr. Streamer, have you filled in your census yet? I have indeed. Um, I filled it in the day that I got it. I heard that if you miss the deadline, it's like a five hundred dollar fee. That's crazy, man. I did get the the long form census. It took like an, an hour to fill it out. Did you lie? Who lie? Why did you lie on your census? That's not even like. I don't understand what you'd even get out of that, you, except trolling. <laughs> To stick it to the man? Yeah, who who do they think they are asking what language I speak in my home? Ask it, you want to know how much my monthly utility bill is? What's next, a license to make toast in my own damn toaster? Do you think that that's how they catch, like, um, drug dealers and stuff like that, though? Like, do you think where you fill out your, um, your census, if they're like, what's your occupation, you just write drug dealer, and they're like, then you submit it, and they're like, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> we got him. Seems unlikely. It should work the other way, though. Like, I think if you admit to being a criminal on your census, you should be absolved of being a criminal. Because, what, do they want to incentivize lying on your census? If, if they don't want you to lie on the census and you're a criminal, then, you know, they gotta absolve you. It's like an attorney-client privilege or something like that. I was so annoyed because the people that live above me never filled out their census. So people kept coming to our house and knocking on the door. 
That is that is mighty annoying. Dude, restock just paid incredible dividends for us there. Would you look at that? That is mighty annoying. Now we're talking. We had that, like, not, not to the same degree. But, like, when we used to live uh, in an apartment that had recently been occupied by somebody else, like, the entire time that we lived there, the previous tenant never updated their address, so we got, like, her tax returns every year. I, I mean, I guess I can't say whether they were returns, but it was, like, a big brown envelope from the Canada, Canada Revenue Agency. And then you just gotta, like, you write on the envelope, like, not me, <laughs> and send it back. I'm sure, like, at the, at the post office, they're like, yeah, sure, not you. And then they send it back to the Canada Revenue Agency. The Canada Revenue Agency is like, this is the address that we have on file. And then they just send it to you again. So you just, you end up playing like, you know, US, well, it's not USPS, but you end up playing, you know, ping pong with Canada Post. Like, I, I swear to you, I'm not Susan. She, apparently she used to live here, but... I was gonna say uh, this is this is for satirical purposes only. Did I occasionally wait a couple of days before sending it back just to give Susan a little time, just to give her a head start? No. Y no. It would be funny though if I did. It would be humorous. Pretty sure the previous tenant at my place didn't never got their stimulus last year. That's terrible. Like you got their stimulus checks? It is I mean it's a little wild, right? Like you guys weren't doing like direct deposit over there or something. I mean I I get a lot of stuff in the mail, but that's because I willfully choose to because I'm like a billion years old. I got it on a prepaid Visa card? Really? They, they <laughs> Yo, Glass Cannon's pretty sick. You sure they didn't just give you like an iTunes gift card or like deposit it directly into your Bitcoin wallet? I'm a tax accountant. Tons of our clients tossed their stimulus cards in the trash because they thought it was a scam. I mean, I I can't really blame him. I will say I got a check in the mail like a couple of weeks ago and I thought it was a scam. I just think everything's a scam now and you're right like 80% of the time. So I looked into it and I was like, nah, it's not a scam. <laughs> but I was like, why does like DHL Says I overpaid like 35 bucks for something? I don't know. Then I was like, ah, well, whatever. Free lunch. DHL is a, uh, they're a shipping company. Yeah, kind of sus. Kind of sus. Free money? A company giving me money instead of asking for it? What lunch are you eating that costs 35 bucks? Uh, three french fries ordered on Uber Eats. Don't lie to me, Walt. Oh, dude, this one could do it. Real talk, it do be expensive. The thing that annoys me the most about DoorDash and Uber Eats is that it's expensive. The second thing that annoys me the most is that the companies are not profitable, which makes no sense. How can you charge like 
I don't like the com the, the driver barely gets paid. They're getting paid like a non-livable wage. They cover all of their own expenses essentially. Um and you the website takes like a $6 fee to deliver literally anything. And yet the company doesn't make money? How can you not make money? You're not doing anything. Like I know <laughs> Maybe it sounds like a little too forehead, but I'm like, you, you're you not doing anything. You, you're you just a website. You're like in, yeah, with like a couple of API calls. I'm sure there's got to be more to it than that. Like I'm, I'm definitely underrepresenting the difficulty, but like if you were like, if Uber was like, I make the food and then I use my car to drive the food to you and I'm not making money. I would be like, that kind of makes sense. But you're like, you're just a website. How much of that money went to uh, Patrick Stewart and Mark Hamill doing Uber Eats ads on television? I got nothing against Patrick Stewart and Mark Hamill or, you know, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey or Leslie Jones or whatever. I'm just saying. Seems seems a little strange to me. Stay away from the purple fires. It's it's sussy sussy baka. Exactly. Tonight I'm having grilled falafel wrap with sweet potato fries. It's my... I'm doing a virtual date. In pajama pants? They only see you from the chest up. UberEats.com Nope. See you never. Uber, you been seeming pretty... Don't lie to me, Uber! How hard was it not to say sussy during the sponsored stream? I will say, um, I was encouraged as I had Twitch, uh, I don't know if it was front page, but it was an official Twitch thing. The, the, the text said, don't be obscene. And I was like, that's a great way to describe it. Because that's not, it, they're not saying don't swear. They're just like, don't, basically it says don't be gross. And I'm like, that's... That's fair. I can understand why you wouldn't wouldn't want me to maybe not not that they wrote it for me, but like you wouldn't want me to do the bit. That's like, what if your doctor was named something like a notorious uh, criminal? <laughs> we could have done the bit that was, what if your doctor was named Keanu Reeves, though. <laughs> what if your doctor was named? The same as Justin's pharmacist. Oh man, gets me, gets me every time. <laughs> I just thought about it again. Oh. <laughs> what? What was his name? I I'm not gonna say it, but Chad can tell you. It's not even like an uh, offensive name. It's just really, really funny. Like. It's just a, a hilarious name. It's fake. It's not fake. I it it's on the the bottle. He he tweeted a photo of the bottle, man. I'm pretty sure if you fake like a pharmacist label like that, you could actually go to like Supermax prison. <laughs> It's just an incredible name. It's it's a truly incredible name. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I'm sorry. I I admire and I I don't uh, take offense to your skepticism because I can. I, I mean, if you saw it in a movie, you would be like, "Oh, you what the?" That's all right. I got another freaking holy card. If you saw it in a movie, you would be like, no way, that's real, man. 
But this ain't a movie, baby. This is real life. Um. <laughs> Let's go. Restock is is doing some dirty work. No more. Lacroix, man, can of croy, can of croy, and I am all right. Well, uh, time to die, like tears in rain. Am I asking for too much to ask for like a second good item? Like, don't get me wrong, I like I like the freezy boy, but like. Imagine if we got like a second good item. It's easy if you try. It's okay, glass can is pretty good, but I, I specifically meant passives. Not actives. You I'm dead. Shut the front door. <laughs> Ooh. Eden soul. Toss around like mother. I mean, we're, we're trying to fight Mega Satan. It's got it. We got to try. And you know what? If we die, then we finish the stream right on time. And if we don't die, we get to live. So it's really it's a win-win. That that purple fire, man. <laughs> I called it. The worst thing about it is that I called it. I even like I started to move out of the way. And it's it was just like, no, I'm gonna go faster. Explain to me how it got extra propulsion. When it was already, it had already been shot. Where does the force come from, Isaac Newton? Some kind of self-propelling tear? Those purple fires, man. <laughs> well, anyway, it was... Oh, <laughs> Kate popped into the Discord to post some photos of the baby. 